On today's Minute of the Apes, I was in a CrossFit Level 2 coaches seminar, and it was coaches teaching other coaches how to, how to teach movements how to coach. and getting criticized by the trainers. And there was a moment where one of the guys said, I'm going to teach you the air squat. Here's how it starts. First, you squat down like you're going to take a shit, <laughs> but then you don't really do it. The green lit the sequel without a story in mind. They just wanted to equal an unexpected go mine. He said, Oh no, as Heston said, I got to go. These are just some of the facts you ought to know as we go. Beneath the minute of the apes. Beneath the minute of the apes. Beneath the minute of the apes. Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Apes movies one minute at a time. I am Todd. I've got Richard and Sean hey. on hump day hey. here at Zeus. Woo! It's new comic book day. <laughs> new comic book day. Correct. I would say what comes out today, Richard, but that would take you being somehow prescient to the idea of yes. what comes out. Yes. Well, I'm, my head is always in months that are comics that are two months out. Uh, yeah. Both are directions. They really? Yeah. So I, I'm ordering stuff for two months from now. I am stalking today's books, and I'm retiring from my shelves stuff from two months ago. So I'm somewhere in, what's the math on that? Four-month window Yeah, four-month window of, of releases. So if you were to walk in right now and say, hey, did this book come out? I'm like, I don't know. Sure, maybe. <laughs> I might have wow. just put in back issues. It might be on my floor right now. I might have just ordered it. The, the more I get to know you in this way, the more it makes me realize you have a job that I couldn't do. Oh. I would lose my mind doing it. Yeah, I, it, you know, managing inventory is not super fun. Uh, customers, 80% are good, 20%. Woof. So w which would be better for you? Managing inventory and customers or directing Beneath the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think I would actually enjoy directing Beneath the Planet of the Apes because that James Franciscus, right? He, he's a cutie and you would do a much better job than Mr. Post did. I'm <laughs> just going to say. Oil sweat all over him, yes. <laughs> I right, some so glisten in the sun. We are up to minute 43. Sean, why don't you tell us what's going on? Uh, we're starting minute 43 with Brent exposing part of the word telephone and ends with Brent jumping down a platform to see something on the ground. Okay, here we go in three, two. All right. As of minute 43, we got three living humans, four dead humans, one dead ape, a shrewdness of apes, and a gaggle of humans. I so wanna... did he really have to see the word telephone to know that that's I, I think it's for the audience. I it don't, is, th I I don't think version. that it's for, for Franciscus. I mean, he's in shock. Sure, but I think it's for the audience. I'm I'm curious if anybody who was listening to this podcast tuned out for like five seconds to check the audio on their, on their laptop. What's happening? Because There's it just nothing. goes totally silent. Just hear drip. I know, uh, no, no dialogue, no nothing. I wanted him to. I did have that as a note in here. I didn't realize until now that we haven't had any dialogue since Zira left the back of the cart unlocked. That's the last time somebody said something. You, you're absolutely right. Yeah, there's been no dialogue since then because it was the fight scene on top of the cart. It's a breakout, get fight scene, get the horses ride, be chased, go hide in a cave. No dialogue. And that's great if you had something that was giving me new information. Yeah, but we'll just, just go back and redub that one girl going. Huh? <laughs> we'll, we'll put a little dialogue in there. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> you gotta hear the sound of P. Okay, so this so this uh, this minute is basically more of what Todd did not like about the last minute. However, more of what I liked about the minute. I, I I want with this minute, I want to throw in a couple of good things. First off, let me give a, a, a note. If I'm understanding correctly, what I could find from the research, this set. 
was pulled from producer Erwin Allen had used it. Uh, the tubular passageways of the tubular New York subway man. system for the ni- a 1968 episode of Land of the Giants. That's according to the notes. Now, oh. I could not find anything in actual film, you know, uh, libraries that tell- they'll use to tell you these things. I couldn't back that up, but okay. I found that note and I thought that was interesting. That is one thing that I want to be fair about. I don't like the way the shot's constructed, and I'm going to really put blame on the editor. I really think. I've had numerous times in this to say the editor is screwing this film up because just like you go watch Jaws and, and there's the thought that Spielberg, even though Spielberg, Spielberg, he delivered a film that in some ways was unusable. And that editor told famous stories about how she was the one saving and putting it together to make sense. So he wasn't shooting properly what they call in the camera, editing in the camera. Right. Francisca's performance in this is actually very good. Oh. I think that what he does rubbing the phone, rubbing the tiles because he wants that tactile sensation, I think he's actually doing the best he can with very little. Just just the shots of him kind of looking frantic and upset and in shock as he kind of darts his head mm-hmm. left and right about the scene that we haven't quite seen yet. He does this moment where he kind of looks around. He looks left. He looks right. He looks up. He looks down. And and then we get the gigantic and cut, pullback and right there. And from that cut there, it's from the last minute to this point where they make that cut. It's a one-minute shot of him coming in and doing all that stuff. And that's my whole point of what bothers me. We're now looking at the wide shot of the subway. And if you look at where he came down, there is no way he didn't see the subway first. And he, yeah, he, when he passes on reacting to it, and he goes to the telephone. It's just impossible for him not have to have looked at everything else. Yeah. I get, well, again, I wonder if it's a darkened cave. I mean, we're supposed to get the sense that it's black over here. Yeah, tell he, me that story. They, he doesn't tell, see much. They've got to tell us that. They're not telling us that. We're, so what, what we can, as they as we go to the wide for the first time and the audience is now seeing where they're at, mm-hmm. you can, if you look closely, can make out that it says uh, Queens, Greensboro. Green, yeah, Queensboro, Queensboro Plaza. Plaza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I mean, had that. I had that as a note here. I'm assuming that the platform was Queen Door Plaza. And then, well, now I'm sure since they did a closer shot of the sign. Well, the audience now knows this is a subway. Yeah. Subway, I, subway terminal station stop. They, w- they wouldn't have known this at the first little bit when he comes down the steps and saw the tile and when he sees the telephone. You wouldn't have necessarily pieced that together. You might begin to guess, but you right. wouldn't know until you get this wide. And this wide is at uh, 42 12, 12 seconds into the minute. I it just, this is neither here nor there. I just think there's a way to construct the story. Where Brent crashes, finds this, doesn't find the apes. Maybe his yeah. surprise is that I've come that to a blown up here, world. Yeah. And you, yeah, the apes later on. Yeah. But we can still cross cut to the apes because we know they're there. You could even cross cut and tell me the story of Taylor and Nova getting separated and blah, blah, blah. And she's looking. This just is in the wrong place, handled in the wrong manner. This should be his surprise. This should be how he handles it initially is. Oh shit! I came back to a world where my world's destroyed. my world's destroyed. Now what do I do? And and he's oh, he's horribly heartbroken. Blah blah blah. And then when he goes on and meets things later on, that's when he sees the apes. We've already seen them because they've cross cut to Ursus's speech. Yeah, makes me really want to do the Phantom edit type <laughs> thing for Beneath the Planet of the Apes because there's a good movie here that wants to be shown and it's just not constructed very Brent well. Brent likes touching stuff, doesn't he? He is he very tactile. His hands all over the Queen for a sign. Yeah, no, he, he so he walks. We we get the wide. He walks a little bit to the left to kind of show more of that. We then get a time on his face. He's doing the same thing where he's apparently reading Queensboro Plaza, but it takes him a little bit to kind of dart back and forth. Like he's, he's not very smart. Like he, 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 he thought really it was, does. He thought it was Braille. It really does. <laughs> he's completely and totally in shock at looking at the screen. And it's just a tight on his head. And then we get the shot of the actual Queensboro Plaza. It is missing some tiles. Mm-hmm. We see the back of his head as he's reading this tile. And again, we just have to assume that he's in shock. I mean, that's the only thing that I could assume. Yeah. And you would be. So we go back to Franciscus wanting to edit this because he said he didn't want Brent to just react to the same things that Taylor did, yet in its own way, he's and reacting he's exactly the to the same things Taylor did. He 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 uh, then reaches over the the, the tile that says Green, Queensboro Plaza and begins to swipe at it as if he's trying to wipe away something. In and I liked that. I thought that was I thought this that can't was good. Be real. I, I, I might have liked it better. If this was the first time he did it. He did it in the minute before when he was coming down and wiping the tiles. Then true, true. I would have liked to have saved that dramatic moment I, for this. I also a, want to know why they haven't a, taken off their tr- damn collars yet. I it just ugh, drives me crazy that they still have those. He's on. a bit of a rocker. He really wanted that look. <laughs> More he's like a choker. Well, mm-hmm. then right after he wipes the plaza, we then go back to another shot of him of his face, and he's again just kind of staring at it and he's reacting to it. I mean, he's doing it, his they're best. really good shots, but they're a little repetitive. He's doing his best Heston there. <gasps> I thought that too. I thought there was some calls to Heston. I, I tried to find out what 
what could you have done with this moment? Because Brent, obviously, if you're going to lose your movie star and you need to introduce a new actor to lead us through this, he obviously has to be exposed to that there are apes that can talk on this planet. And that the, and humans that the world, at some point. Humans yeah. and that the world that you knew is blown up. You have to have that. He now has to learn those. It just felt like he he should have a bigger revelation than, oh, my God, we did it. Because we've already heard, oh, my God, we did it. That's unfair to the Brent character, but we've already heard it. But I think that's in the next minute, though. Yeah, that's... Oh, is yeah, it yeah, next? Yeah, I'm next sorry. Guessing. Because after he comes back from the, from the plaza, that's when he whips his head to the left, to the right. He then looks up, and this is the moment that he seems to realize that he's actually in a subway. Okay, see, that's what he should have done. And when then he, he looks the down. Really he now. looks down. He's looking. He's peering at the at the track. And this I is kept when, thinking right there he was found a charred rat. This is when he. <laughs> Pizza rat. This is when he steps down. This, right. This right. is about the end of our minute here. Which okay, how many times in this movie have we seen them zoom in on things? And on that one, they actually had a push. I yeah. mean, it was a real physical dolly, dolly push. I, I, they can't figure out what kind of movie Their they want to make. Language that they want to uh-huh. use. So he 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 wipes away the Queensboro Plaza. He then looks to the right in shock. Then looks to the le- sorry looks to the screen left in the shot, and then the right, and that's when he begins to step down off onto the tracks, and that's kind of about where this yeah, ends, where, where he's is. looking at something that we don't see yet. It's, I hate to to say it, but this, no, you don't. This you is going back to this going back to the beginning of Planet of the Apes, where there's very little to talk about because there's very, very little, little that hap- happens. There's stuff that's happening, but it's all information that we've gotten before, so you're not learning anything new I well mean, uh, well okay so we're we are i guess think about this we're coming back to a moment where the statue of liberty still existed whatever happened in this reality on earth not much has progressed technology wise from what they already know they did not use a souped up queensborough plaza they used an old rotary phone they used track right so is whatever techno- yeah when did uh, when did this destruction happen that technology is so dated to a 70s 60 time period that we don't have if our yeah. our yeah our, our space technology just grew leaps and bounds and our subways remained the same i thought it would have been fun almost fun this is horrible but in <laughs> in a pompeii kind of way how we people, people were like yeah you know, that were charred you know and you saw those kind of things or the shadow of someone from the blast the, of it anything like that would have been that could have been new and interesting to me i've not seen that well, but 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 you're you you say blast, mm-hmm. but we still don't know that that's what happened in this reality. Well, there's nothing. There's assuming. nothing that has told us that. Yet. Yeah. I, okay. See, I disagree because I think the molten stuff around the phone. I think the charged struts for the subway is supposed to convey the fact that there was some type of, of explosion, explosion or, or yeah, lava how, yeah. or something like but that. You basically warped stone, you've warped metal, you've got all those kind of things. All these tiles are knocked away. Something has happened to eradicate and blow that well, away. I mean, we would assume that because we're watching a science fiction movie in which the apes have learned to talk and humans are gone and something happened to New York right. and something catastrophic happened. But I mean, it could have just been the passage of time, you know? It could have been anything. It could have been anything. Exactly. Well, on that dour note, we're <laughs> in the... <laughs> I don't have anything else. Do you? No, uh, no I kind of like this discovery. I like I okay. these minutes. Uh, that's one thing I enjoy about you. <laughs> you find, no, really. You're trying to find the pleasure in this movie. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through this movie. What I like about you is I completely and totally disagree with you. <laughs> no, no, I like the fact that you have your beliefs and you stick to them. And also the fact that you're finding that because I've watched, I don't, of all the films, I don't watch this one at all. It is out of my rotation. <laughs> there were probably a lot of Planet of the Eight film uh, film fans that hate me for it, but I don't watch it. it. I yeah. don't like it at all. Huh. And it's just because of that. I think it's, it's a hard very, 95 minutes. It is very hard. And it really, when we get to the next film, I want to go back and ask you, could we have completely gotten to this film without ever having, this, having that film? We, if this film didn't exist, would it change the the franchise. Right. <laughs> I, I really think that you could very easily tweak the next one just a little skosh and never have needed that. I, I re, well, now Sean is not watching these films. So I got months to find oh, out. That's we, can't, true. we can't reveal anything about future movies. For those of you that don't, know, I don't disagree with you. Sean does not know these films. Sean, even though he is amongst the geekiest of my geek friends in I the never world, never watched the originals. He he didn't watch these growing up. Yep. And so he's watching these are brand Minute new to time. him. Richard <sighs> and I've seen them before. Sean is a newbie. Yes, I'm a virgin to these. And we may lose him after Beneath the Planet. Oh. Anyway.
All right. That is, is this, was that hump day? Yeah, that's Wednesday. We've just right. finished it. Yeah, I've got to go we, sell some comic books. Yeah. Huh? That was only, so we've taken <laughs> about 15 minutes of your life, and I completely forgot what day it was already in that 15 <laughs> minutes.